Hello everybody, happy Monday. I'm back today with another read aloud. This one is called Boxytex and it's written and illustrated by Kim Smith. I'm able to read this to you today thanks to the kind permission of HarperCollins Publishers um, who are allowing teachers like myself to um, read aloud um, their books during the time of school closures. So thanks to HarperCollins Publishers and to the author and illustrator, Kim Smith. Now this book was recommended to me by Mr. Ball. Mr. Ball has this in his classroom and he introduced it to me um, a couple of months ago during his uh, box project that he was doing with his class. And I thought this was a great, great book with a great story about friendship and cooperation. So although I haven't bought it for the library yet, it's on my list. Um, I did buy it for my girls and I'm reading it for you today. So enjoy. I'm just gonna take the cover off because it's crinkly. And this is what the inside cover looks like. A little bit different. Meg was a boxy tech. She loved to make things out of boxes. Look at her, she's got all kinds of different boxes here. And she's got a trusty sidekick to help her. She loved making ha tiny houses, tall towers, and twisty tunnels. And she made marvelous things no one had ever seen before. Looks like she's uh, defending her castle over here with her trusty cardboard sword. Meg was proud of her work. She could make boxes into anything. Meg's mother was proud too. She thought Meg was brilliant and creative. So Meg's mother sent Meg to make a school where she could be even more brilliant and creative. At make a school, there were blanketeers, spaghetti techs, tin foilers, and egg cartoneers. There was almost any kind of maker you could imagine. But Meg was the class's first boxitect, and that made her feel special. So you can see the blanketeers and the spaghetti techs. Where are the tin foilers? Mm, I can't find them right now. At school, Meg learned all about boxitecture. She learned how to make her structures useful and strong and beautiful. Meg loved everything about Maker School. I would like Maker School and so would my kids. Until Simone showed up. You see Simone? Like Meg, Simone was new. She was also brilliant and creative. Worst of all, Simone was a boxitect too. And she was already making things Meg had never dreamed of. Whoa, look at that. An airplane out of cardboard. In class, Simone would point out ways Meg could make her constructions a little stronger. Sorry, a little straighter. More wind resistant and less boring. So Meg told Simone she should build things that were less bumpy, sturdier, and much prettier. Hmm, I don't think they're getting along. On the last day of school, the class's annual maker match was held to see who could make the most amazing thing. There was just one rule. You had to work as a team. 
But Meg didn't want to work with anyone. And neither did Simone. Hmm. I see problems ahead. The blanketeers built with blankets and pillows. The spaghetti techs built with pasta and glue. The bakeologists built with cake and frosting. Hmm, that might be my new favorite maker activity. But the boxer techs were not building at all. I wonder what they were doing instead. I think you can imagine. They were arguing. I want to make a tree house, Meg said. No, I want to make a ship, Simone insisted. Meg drew a line down the middle of a very large cardboard box. I'll take this half, you can take the other half. Fine, said Simone. Hmm, they're not being very collaborative right now, are they? Soon, Meg noticed that her treehouse wasn't as large as Simone's ship. So, she made her side taller and more impressive. When Simone noticed that Meg's treehouse was taller than her ship, she made her side higher and more extraordinary. Slowly, Meg and Simone's creation grew bigger and bigger. They both built and built until there wasn't a single box left. And at last, they finished. What is it? asked a classmate. I've never seen anything like it, said another. The teacher said, It looks interesting. I'm sorry. It looks like it might... <gasps> Achoo! Crash! Oh no, it fell down. Your side was too wobbly, shouted Meg. Your side was too heavy, cried Simone. Oh dear, said the judge. The maker match was not over yet, but most of Meg and Simone's work was ruined. There were only a few parts left that could be saved. Hmm, if we combine my treehouse with your ship, Meg started, we might be able to make one thing, finished Simone. The boxer techs decided to call a truce so they could finish the match. Working as a team, Meg and Simone quickly joined the remaining pieces together until they had created something new. At the end of the maker match, the Boxitex hadn't won first place, but they had a different way of making brilliant and creative things, working together. And they each gained a new friend. What shall we make next? How about a buoyant bungalow? Or a motorcycle mansion? And those are just some activities that you can do at the end. So I hope you enjoyed the box attacks. I think it is a powerful lesson of friendship and cooperation and give and take. And um, so I have a challenge for you, as I often do at the end. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some examples of box attacks and blanketeers and spaghetti text and tin foilers. And if you would like, and if you have the time, perhaps you could become a maker yourself and make something with the supplies we just mentioned or any other supplies that you might have. You could become a Play-Doh tech 
are a modeling clay expert and um, you could share them with your teacher and if you could copy your teacher librarian at Christopher underscore Lister at sd33.bc.ca that would also be wonderful. I would love to see what you're doing. So I hope you enjoyed the boxy text. If you would like a hands-on creative activity, perhaps you could become a box detect or a spaghetti tech or build something and share it with your teacher and your teacher librarian. Have a great day and I'll see you on our next read aloud. Bye.